So it's the end of yet another week, and here on this channel that means one thing and one thing only. Every weekend I post an episode of this series we do called Your Take Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week a lot, and I mean a lot, went down in the NBA world as the NBA draft finally arrived, which resulted in all of the top prospects finally finding their NBA homes for the foreseeable future, and then along with that, there were quite a few trades made, as well shaking things up even further, so of course we have plenty to discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now, so if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start, though, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Kinetic Kings. If you're trying to get yourself looking right for the sun this summer, look no further than what they have in store for you. We're all basketball fans here, which means we're all in the market for some fresh new basketball drip, and Kinetic Kings have the best looking and most aesthetically pleasing basketball shorts on the market right now. They're a new streetwear brand, making waves with their impressive designs and clean take on a pair of basketball shorts for an affordable price, and the only problem is that they're selling out quick, because clearly I'm not the only one that feels that way. They bring a vintage 90s look that works well with some of the hottest sneakers out right now, so they'll fit into any outfit with a nice pair of kicks. If any of these shorts have caught your eye, then go down to the link in the description of the video to get yourself a pair, and be sure to use code HOOPS for 15% off of your purchase. Once again, thank you to Kinetic Kings for sponsoring the video, now let's get back to the topic at hand. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Jacob, and he says that even if the Lakers were to land someone like Zach Levine or Kyrie Irving this summer, it wouldn't even significantly improve the team because the defense would still be atrocious. The Lakers, without fail, will always find themselves in offseason headlines, linking themselves to some of the biggest names available on the market, and of course, this summer has been no different. When a LeBron James-led team struggles as mightily as the Lakers did last season, drastic changes will always be in the cards, and with Russell Westbrook trade rumors constantly popping up, they were always naturally going to be drawn to some of the big names. In recent weeks, it also just so happened that the Brooklyn Nets are on the verge of imploding because of their unwillingness to give Kyrie Irving a long-term contract extension, and now Irving seems somewhat likely to be on the move. In fact, one report came out recently stating that Irving could possibly be willing to take the mid-level exception in order to sign with the Lakers, which would be a significant pay reduction for him, but if winning is his top priority, then he's free to do as he pleases money-wise, of course. What's in question, though, according to the take that we're discussing here, is whether or not acquiring him would even elevate the team that much. Last summer, the Lakers acquired Russell Westbrook, and immediately the Lakers were pegged by many as title contenders, only for them to go on to become one of the most disappointing teams in the league in recent history. So that has definitely taught us to chill out a bit, reacting to big moves and possibly overreacting. But the difference between Russell Westbrook and Kyrie Irving is that Irving's playstyle actually fits much better alongside LeBron James, and it has proven to be a winning formula in the past. Now, sure, LeBron is much older now than he was the last time that he played with Kyrie Irving, but a healthy Anthony Davis can still anchor a top defense, and at the moment the Lakers only have six players under contract, so we need to see and wait to see what kind of moves that they do have to fill out that roster. Irving would be an incredible piece for the Lakers because he is a lethal scorer, unlike this current version of Russell Westbrook, and while the defense does deserve to be questioned a little bit, there's still a wait and see type thing that we could go with here. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Arian, and he says that the Sacramento Kings made the right choice by selecting Keegan Murray instead of Jaden Ivey in the draft. The Kings have gotten a ton of scrutiny over the last few days because while most people looked at this year's draft as having four prospects clearly sticking out above the rest, the Kings chose to pass on one of them in favor of Murray. I, myself, have also already briefly explained part of why 
why I thought that their decision was a mistake in my last videos, but of course, Kings fans are vehemently fighting back against this idea, doubling down, backing their team selection. Now, to start off, I will say that I understand the logic behind the selection, even if I disagree with it. The Kings just traded away Tyrese Halliburton because of how crowded their backcourt was getting, and the team wants to transition more towards a win-now mindset, so drafting Jaden Ivey would have theoretically brought upon a similar situation to what they were previously in and tried to avoid. Keegan Murray is going to be 22 years old by the time the NBA season starts, he plays a position of need, and he has a skill set that is much more ready to produce immediately, even if his ceiling as a player is a lot lower than someone like Ivy's. With all of this being said though, I too am doubling down on saying that the pick was a mistake for a few reasons. For starters, I will simply never agree with the idea of a team that early in the draft picking a player based on fit over talent. When drafting in the lottery, you should always be looking to draft the best players available because if you're picking in the lottery, it probably means that your team isn't very good at the moment, so you can't afford to be whiffing on the best players. Secondly, I remember Kings fans being equally upset when I said that the Kings trading away Halliburton was a mistake because Sabonis does not put them over the top to make them a playoff team, and wouldn't you know it, but Sabonis did, in fact, not put them over the top so I proved to be right there. The Kings are not a good enough team right now to realistically compete for anything meaningful, and Jaden Ivey is still the better player, so I firmly disagree with their decision. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from The Outsiders, and they say that the Houston Rockets have the brightest future in the entire league right now after the draft. The Rockets were one of my big winners of the draft for sure, because they landed a nice haul of talent, including Jabari Smith at number 3 overall. Looking at the Rockets roster now, they have an abundance of young players with all kinds of skill sets, with guys like Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. bringing aggression and creativity in the backcourt, Smith now ready to serve as the glue in their lineup, Alperin Sengun looking like a baby Nikola Jokic, and plenty more promising youngsters developing in that system, and honestly, it's tough to dispute this claim. What I will say, though, is that it is important to have at least a few veteran guys in the locker room of a young team to demonstrate the leadership, and the Rockets are currently missing that, but comparing young cores, the Rockets can hold up against anybody. The NBA moves so quickly, and there's never a guarantee that groups like this will stick together for the long run or actually develop into a contending team as currently constructed, but some franchises simply rely on building their teams through spending in free agency and making trades, but I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't a big fan of what the Rockets are building down in Houston right now. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the takes we discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.